Okay, guys, uh, we left off last time. Well, we were able to uh, get um, routing working um, the way we wanted to. Um, and the next step was going to be to make those pug templates. So let's do that. Um, the first thing we need to do is install, um, is install pug to our project. So I'm going to clear the screen here and run npm install pug. Um, now I have to ask myself a question. Um, will I need pug in the future? The answer is yes. Um, uh, do I need it as just as a developer, or am I going to need it for my for my server when it's running in production? And the answer to that is production. Um, Pug will be continuously uh, being used on the server. Um, so we're going to save that to our package JSON. So anyone that uses this project, once again, will be able to just um, just run npm install and get everything they need. So hopping over to our package JSON, we'll see next to Express we have an entry for Pug. Um, it's in beta. Oh, that is that is a great way to scare me. Let's pretend we didn't see that, um, and let's let's uh, keep moving on. Um, I'm gonna re I'm gonna require pug here. Um, do do do. I don't know why I'm gonna require pug here. I don't really need to require it there. Nothing here is ever gonna call pug. Uh, oh, I lied to you. Okay, I'm gonna require pug here, and I said this very confidently, and I'm still just as confident as I was the first time I said it. Um, and the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to tell Express that I am interested in using Pug as my uh, templating uh, language. Um, so basically, um, if we take a look at the, um, look at that, this is exactly what we did. We're going to run this app.setView engine to Pug, and that'll basically mean when I am um, spitting out this information, um, It'll, it'll basically, when I call this render function, it'll render my templates the way I expect. I'm going to have to look into what this index is. I'm not sure if this is, this is probably like a local require string or something, um, but, but we'll get into that. So um, the next thing I'm going to do is um, use this command. So I'll just copy paste it because I am a uh, wonderful developer and that's what I do, which is copy paste, copy paste for days. And I'll basically tell uh, my Express app that I am interested in using Pug. Um, so anytime I call res.render, it's going to be using Pug's functions. Uh, what Pug's going to do is it's going to render um, the Pug template that I give it. And it's going to um, uh, insert this, this data object that Pug will be able to use to render the correct content. So um, title will be you know, rendered as hey in this template. And then hello there will come in here. So as a result, you'll get an HTML thing that has a certain title for the tab at the top, and the body will have um, a certain message. Um, so the final result will be exactly uh, what, your, what your data is told it to render. So let's do this. Um, let's uh, get straight to it. Um, there's no real, no real work I need to do besides to create my first uh, index.pug um, view. Um, apparently, it's looking for a views directory. Like I said, I do not want to create model views and controllers. Um, I want to be able to set my um, views directory to uh, whatever whatever I'm interested in. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do an app dot set here. Instead of say, hey, look in views directory for all my views, I'm going to say um, just look in this directory for my views, and it'll be my responsibility to uh, to route to the correct view uh, after after that. So. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to set that to the root of the project. The dot means start at the one north demo folder, um, and then inside of my um, developer's landing controller, we can actually get to work in rendering an actual uh, pug template. So here we used to just print out the developer names. Uh, we don't need to do that anymore because we're going to actually have a real um, uh, real objects that we're going to be able to to work with here. So um, I grab the developers, that's all the same, but here I'm going to be doing my render. Um, and render is going to be, um, uh, it's going to render, it's, I'm going to have to give it the, the path to my view. So starting at this one north demo folder, going in, I'll have to go to uh, developers landing and then index.js. So we'll just tell it to do that. So um, go into developers landing 
Let's make sure that's the syntax they use. They might not use the dot in front of it. Okay, well, we might run into some weirdness. Um, let's just say developers landing slash, and then I'm gonna say the name of my template, which will be template.plug, and we'll have to create that file. But basically what I'm gonna insert um, is going to be this, this object um, that's gonna have a developers property on it. And we're gonna give it this developers object that we made up here. So um, pug will uh, see this data be injected into the template. Um, let's go to find that template. I'm really actually very, very hyped about this. I've never used pug before, um, in case I haven't said that enough times. So template or template.pug, uh, we can say, you know, let's say view.pug um, so that we're consistent with the model view controller uh, language that we're using. Um, so view.pug. We'll go in this developer's landing folder. Let me change this here to say view, so I'm not pointing to the wrong file. Um, great. And I feel like um, there's no pug here, so I probably don't need to specify pug. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. I'll just um, I'll be a good kid and, and try to look, look at the context around me to make the right decision, especially because I'm not uh, familiar with what, I am, uh, what I'm doing here. So we've got this view.pug. I'm going to just make that HTML. Um, as you can see, plain text is what it's going to render because um, I have not installed the pug package. Um, but I'm definitely going to do that um, so that I get that syntax highlighting. First thing better be it. Hooray. OK, cool. So once I install this with Adam, I'll be able to Oh, great. I immediately get syntax highlighting. I don't even need to close out the file. So I'm just going to kind of go off this example here. They say head. Um, great. So that's great. Head, um, I will say uh, title. It's going to equal. And then we'll just say um, the developers. Uh, maybe we can say one north developers. And then for my body, this is where my content's going to go. Um, I guess I'm going to have to hop over to the pug um, information to figure out how to do a do a repeater. And we're just going to repeat through all the there's loops. There's got to be a loops code mm, conditionals something. Who knows, dude? Code. Nope, maybe. I don't know anymore. Um, iteration, there we go. That's the word we're looking for. So there's this each operator. We can use that. And that'll just uh, generate this list for each developer. Um, in developers, we can render out the developer.name. OK, so let's do that. So let's say um, we'll make a UL, which is an unordered list. And we'll say for each um, thing we do here, um, we're going to say each developer in developers. And that developers object we should have because we inserted it um, into our model. This property defines it, not this one. If I called it developers5 here, um, pug would be expecting developers5 as the key there. But I didn't. Um, let me close other tabs. Um, cool. So for each of these, I'm going to just print out a list item that is going to be uh, developer.name, I guess. I, it might just be that easy. I, I don't know. Um, so let's look at our controller. We got our developers. We're doing a render. We specify what view we need to render to. We give it the, the context, the data that it needs. And we kind of just iterate through here. And we're going to build um, a view. Let's, I, let's see if it works. I want to see if this blew up. Did this blow up? It didn't. I'm really nervous, if you can't tell. Uh, here we go. Holy moly, Pug is free. Okay, look at that. And at the top, we have uh, our One North developers. That's what we specified in our Pug template. And we, we have a list in our body that just went through my data structure, and it and it spit it out. And that was that was great. That was a really wonderful first experience with Pug. Um, if, if you are the developer of Pug, and for some strange reason you're watching a video on how to use Pug, I just want to let you know you did a great job. Um, that was that was delightful. Okay, cool. So um, now that we have this, we can start to think about how we want to lay out our, our developers page. 
Um, so what I like to do um, is I like to use CSS frameworks um, so that you don't see me spending time trying to figure out what the heck uh, is wrong with my code in IE. And I think one of my favorite frameworks um, lately has been Balma.io. It's a pretty uh, great um, responsive Flexbox framework. And what's nice about things being responsive is I'll be able to, to get uh, the same piece of code looking good on all the, all screens. So it kind of has these kinds of uh, helpers, which will allow us to do pretty common layout patterns. Um, but usually what I, what I like is I like to have uh, something that's a fixed size, and then the rest just kind of fills out. And that's what this auto, uh, this is what this auto does. So let's, um, let's, uh, let's get Balma involved. Um, I'm going to just uh, look CDN Balma. And a CDN just, it's gonna host that code for me. Um, so I can just go to that URL and I can trust that, um, I wonder if I can copy link tag. Actually, I should just copy this because I don't know how Balma does link tags. Let's find out. Uh-huh. <laughs> so let us look at tags. Mm-hmm. Yep. No idea what I'm doing. Uh, let us go to the reference guide. And I'm going to control F link. Nope. Nope, 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 that is not right. All right, let's just see if it's straightforward. So tags, I want to have a link tag that's probably gonna have an attribute, right? So um, this is how they make a, a link tag, let's, let's do it. Uh, after my title, I'm gonna have a link, and that link tag is going to um, have an attribute, href equals something, okay. Uh, I think it's still href with link, could be mistaken, but basically, uh, maybe I should say the type. So it's amazing how long I've been developing things, but I still don't know the syntax for the link URL. So let's see what that looks like first. Let's kind of make sure I have all the right properties on it. So rel style sheet, I want to have that. Um, so rel equals style sheet. That style shit, that is not valid. Um, and then yeah, we get that that URL. Let's see if this works. This is, this is, I'm very excited. I don't know if you guys are hyped. I'm so hyped. Oh, I'm so hyped. Okay, that's great. That is, you can see our CSS changed. Um, you can see that there's no console errors. We're doing great work out there. Um, the reason our CSS changed is because now it's getting all these um, these Balma classes. Um, it's using this mini mini reset, um, which is coming from our, our Balma URL that we can see here. So we're we're getting it. We've got this. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some of that cool stuff. The reason I, I reached for Pug, and the reason that I was pretty uh, excited to to use it at all was because I want to um, have some parts of the page that are always going to be the same, and there's there's going to kind of be slots that I want to insert the the content that's subject to change. So um, if I were to make this this view pug, I'm gonna I'm gonna save it in the developer's um, detail folder. Save. So now this is. Oh, I'm so I'm so looking forward to seeing if this works. So this will get the developer's name and put it right in the title for me. Um, this still should do that, and then. Um, We'll just spit that out. So I want to save that there for developer. Oops. <laughs> Looks like I saved that in the wrong spot. Oh, never mind. We're good. Um, nope. So in the developer's detail, this is what my view should look like. It'll just put out the developer's name in the top, and we'll just spit out the developer's name for now. Um, and then here, um, instead of doing all this, once I get my developer, instead of printing it out, we're going to use that res.render that we used before. And we are going to um, render that view. So starting from one north demo, we go into developer's detail. 
um, and then we go into this view. We don't need to specify pug, we saw that before. And then I'm gonna render this, this is the data that I want to inject into my pug template. So let's just give it that developer. And do you think it'll work? I, my mind is just, I can't understand how this is so easy. I, oh, thank God, okay. Okay, there was a problem, this is so good. Okay, I never, I never know what's up. So developers dash detail, we come in here. Um, did we do anything different? Developers detail, we had this developer. Uh, view comes in, we have this view. I'd love to see what the issue is. So let's just do this. Maybe we had a problem there. So Eric Karen is rendering correctly. Oh, so this isn't this isn't a thing. I have no idea what I was thinking. We should probably tell it what it is. You know, the type, like, hey, this is an H1 tag or something. Okay, that was me misusing pug. So here we go. We've got one north here. We see Eric Karen. So great. And then we've got Eric Karen. If I went to Emma, Emma Birdsong. Oh, wow, this is perfect. And then if I go to me, we got Ryan Haskell Glatz. Awesome. Okay, cool. So that that's it, right? So no matter what data comes in here, as long as it follows that developer uh, uh, format, as long as it agrees to that that model, um, we'll be okay. So I think something that that we didn't really create. You'll see there's a controller and a view, but there's no model .js, and we can we can extend that. We can create that model, but basically the model that we're looking at is this this here, which is a contract between the view and the controller saying what is the format of the data that you expect. So um, I could I could totally say um, if our model equals require um, equals require the uh, model file that's going to be sitting next to this controller. Um, so this would blow up right now if I saved it. But if I created this model.js file here, this is where I'd export, um, it'll be a function and it'll take in some parameters, right? Um, this is basically, this will basically be the model. So, um, so this is, this is a simple way of, of making a model in JavaScript. We can just say return um, developer, um, developer. So this is basically the model's responsible for uh, making sure that the key here matches the input here. So even if this was, these were, you know, ABC, it's going to make sure that it converts it to an object that has, has these properties. So um, we can save that. Um, so when I call this function, I give it these parameters. It's essentially a constructor that will return me this, this JSON object. So here, instead of doing this, this syntax and being redundant with developer developer, I can say model. Um, and then I can say all the stuff that I need, or the model needs, to build that model in the way that the view is expecting. So hopefully this will still work the same way. Model is not a function. That's kind of offensive. How dare you say that to me? So model.js. Um, ah, module.exports. Not module.export. There we go. I'm a noob. What are you going to do? So great. So we've kind of we've kind of put our model in here. We can do the same thing for developers, um, where we can create that that model here. We can say model, and it passes in the developers. Maybe the view um, it wants to kind of transform that data, um, and the controllers are kind of responsible for making sure that that, that happens. But um, uh, we're going to basically just uh, require the model like we did before. I don't need to say JS, um, so I won't. Um, and then yeah, we'll just insert that that model. Um, so our controllers are actually pretty pretty basic. They're using these helpers, which are really doing uh, the, the the meat of the work that we need for this web application. Um, this is going to crash my server. That's okay. New file model.js module.exports. Uh, sorry, it's a function. It's going to take in developers. going to return that object. Great guys, so we, we created our model, we got our controller in our view, and this is MVC more or less, right, in JavaScript. 
um, written by a guy that just learned how to do the V and learned and just made up how to do the M and kind of made up how to do the C. So, <laughs> but it's following that pattern where we have our routes kind of dictate what's going on. Let's see if this blows up. Great, everything's working the way we expect. Um, this model exists as a contract um, between the controller and the view. So the controller is going to kind of um, understand what what uh, is the form of the data that needs to come in. So that model is going to define, hey, it's going to be an object with these properties. Um, in this case, it's this object. So this is kind of our, our developer's detail view model. Um, for those of you guys coming from like a C-sharp background where we normally have to explicitly declare things, which is actually a huge benefit. Um, so uh, great, great stuff. Um, we can make a model and a view for the home page, but I'm not, I'm not particularly interested in the home page right now. I really want to dive into that. Um, really want to dive into that developer's landing page and uh, use this Balma framework to make things look gorgeous uh, across all display types. Um, so let's uh, let's do that because because I'm in charge. Um, there's some pretty cool things. There's these things called heroes, which give uh, um, this cool looking you know, a big, big jumbo section um, makes it look like a modern web application. So, whew, that is a really pretty in-your-face red. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm just going to go ahead and, and use this, this is bold uh, gradient here um, with the information they gave us. They've got a lot of uh, cool things going on here. So let's let's just uh, try to render that using Pug. So we're gonna kind of have to take this HTML and, and translate it to our templating language, but hopefully it'll be um, more readable by the end. Um, so let's go ahead and make a section. Um, it's gonna have a class hero and a class is primary. Um, all this stuff is just kind of me browsing the API this morning when I was like, hey, I should make a video. Um, so if you're confused by any of this, divs are, they're implied. You don't have to say div, which is great because um, it's kind of a, a lot of boilerplate. You find yourself typing div a lot. So we're gonna make that. And then we see here we have this H1 with the class title. Um, I, I think I'm gonna be using pug for everything. Holy moly, this is so free. Um, so here, this is a great example of how we could we can make that view model a little bit more powerful. Um, so instead of hard coding um, lawyers, let's put that in our view model and then it'll be ready to, or sorry, lawyers. <laughs> instead of hard coding developers here, let's put that in our view model as um, title, right? And then and uh, we can have that subtitle. Um, this is so much more readable. I have no idea how I've gone so far in my life without this. This is, uh, this is delightful. So we had this developers, we had this subtitle and this title. This is what our view is expecting when it's rendering. Um, so let's let's give it, let's give the view uh, what it wants, right? So, um, oh, excuse me, I forgot the is bold prefix here. I think I was in the wrong section. And then is medium will make it a little bit taller. So other than that, hero body looks good, container looks good, and, and title and subtitle look good. Let's go into our model and let's make sure that um, our model is returning uh, the, the right information. So, so here we have our view. We're going to save that. We'll hop into model. This is our contract of what we expect. Um, we can say this will be um, format will be title, subtitle, developers. Some title. And the reason I created this model abstraction, it's, you know, I could have just taken this data array and put it right in the controller. But now the controller, if it uses the model, it kind of enforces it that, that when I define this, this structure, even if they don't provide me a subtitle, I'm still going to give them, you know, some, some data. And you can even put in um, um, uh, defaults here using this or syntax. Basically, if it can't find title, uh, from the parameters, it'll just um, it'll populate here. Look at these nerds. That's what I'm gonna put there. And then developers, if it's if it's no good, I'll I'll give that the default of an empty array, um, which I think is a is a nice way to prevent the model from blowing up if the controller doesn't use it correctly. 
So I'm going to do this for readability. Um, I'm going to insert as a title um, developers and um, I will look at these nerds. I'll put a period in there. Um, but basically, if I didn't specify this, um, it would either this this thing would blow up on me or it would uh, it would default. Um, so if I put null in for any of these, it would use the default of the model, which is kind of nice. But let's take a look at that that landing page and see if it did what we expected. Um, oh wow, wow. Okay, great. So maybe this isn't the colors that we want. Um, we can kind of we can kind of play around with that later. But let's focus on. Um, Let's focus on getting this list to render correctly. So for now, instead of his primary, I'm going to say it's dark. You see that that was so easy. Imagine if I had to go back and relaunch that server. I'm glad that we got Nodemon running. This is um, this development process is it's really easy for me to focus on on what's important. Um, so yeah, so developers look at these nerds, and uh, let me just make some tiles for each of these these nerds um, that were that were. Uh, looking at. So let's look for a component that's going to do that. Containers, that's not what we want. We want a component. Maybe we want to render developers like this. Maybe we want to render them um, like this. Um, media object. Let's, uh, let's use a media object and let's not use all this extra stuff. Um, but maybe we could, we could extend that later. You can say Eric Karen and you know here's his Facebook links, all those different types of things. Um, but I think I think that would be a good that'd be a good call to use this media object, um, at least for this for this view. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take a look at what uh, what the syntax for this media object is. This is going to drive me nuts. Okay, so uh, it's going to be media. We're going to have a figure which is media left. This div. This is media content. Um, I'm going to just use their placeholder. I think that's a great placeholder image. So this template uh, can just loop straight through. Um, basically, it'll it'll loop through everything and create uh, this media item for each thing. So let's make an article uh, that has class media. Um, I'm going to get rid of this stuff here. This is just going to distract me. Uh, underneath that, I'll have a figure with class media left. That'll tell it to go to the left. We'll have a P tag that has image. Um, and then this is a Balma modifier that makes sure that it's uh, of a certain size. Um, cool. And then we'll have this image where we define the source. So we'll say source equals, and we'll just grab the source that they're using so that we get this. Uh, <laughs> I like how it says is 128 by 128 um, because it's not. It says 64. And maybe we do want to do uh, 128 by 128. Let's do that. So it'll be a little bit different. Cool. And then here we'll have, um, we'll kind of get out of that figure. But next to figure, we'll have our media content, which is a div. So we don't need to specify um, that div part. And then the content itself will have the stuff that we're interested in rendering. So we can make a p tag. Um, kind of like they did. Uh, that's strong. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, P tag uh, strong. Um, and then we'll say that's going to equal um, our developer's name. Neat. And then after that, we will have. Um, I'll just put another P tag in. I don't like, I don't care for using BRs. Um, and that paragraph text is going to be developer dot uh, favorite language, I guess. Huh. Interesting. Let's see if that worked. Oops. Holy moly, that was free. Cool. So what we can do here is we can say this is going to be an H three or you know uh, whatever and. We'll set that equal to the name. So that's good. We'll give it some padding. I like to have some padding around my, my elements. Um, not sure why there isn't any padding here. But as you as you can see here, 
as we extend this, um, we're we're not um, we're not having these images being limited here. And so what we can do with that is we can say um, ul. You know, it can uh, be a container. I think that's the syntax for. Yeah, it's for aligning it like that. Um, and I'm really curious about how to do these margins in the in a Balma way um, without without being um, without without having to customize the the SAS. But basically, um, you can see all that data. It just kind of got inserted there. Um, favorite language could probably use some context instead of just dropping um, a random word. Oops. Let's see if that worked. I am uh, I am just very very happy with this. This is uh, incredibly easy to show. Uh, what's what's going on? And my goodness. Okay. That's awesome. So we can add these these modifier classes and, and have. Um, you know, title and subtitle. I guess you can say things like is three, and you can say things like is five to make these a different size. So you can see that's how that's rendering it, but we don't need to play around with that too much. Um, anyway, so let's focus on uh, the next step, which would be, um, you know, we can kind of have this view um, for these developers, and it's pretty straightforward what we're doing. Um, I'm just going to put a padding top on this, see how that goes. Style. Uh, I have no idea how to do this, but I'm really looking forward to messing up. So padding top, uh, make that... Pixels. What if this just worked, you guys? What if this just... Holy moly! Okay, I'm the happiest man that ever lived. Um, ever. Just ever. Wow. Okay, cool. And then we can probably do that for the content here, too. So... So we get some padding in there. We get some... Just universal padding would be good. Cool. So we get some spacing for that. Um, great. Great, great, great. And that, that's kind of looking the way that I want it to for now. Um, we can even, we can even uh, use that gender to be, um, to be sexist. I guess we could color the name of the, <laughs> we could color the font of the name pink or blue. I think that would be obnoxious. Um, but let's just, let's avoid doing that for sure. Um, but this is our template. Um, so, so far so good. Um, but when I when I go over to make this view, you're going to see a lot of this, a lot of the stuff is being repeated, and the reason that I wanted to avoid that was we're going to move into this next phase um, pretty shortly. It looks like uh, with how fast things are coming along, um, where we're going to want to um, include this this tag. We're not going to want to have to keep copy pasting this tag everywhere, and and heaven forbid we ever stop using. Uh, Balma, we're going to have to go across all of our, our view.pugs in the entire application and delete this out and replace it, and, and that's that's tedious. And I don't think I don't think we deserve that kind of uh, that kind of life. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try this, um, and this is the reason I was looking forward to using pug. I'm gonna create this this default layout uh, index.pug, which is essentially going to um, this is gonna. It's gonna just hold all the stuff that that we we need um, for every application, and then just kind of put slots in for where we want to insert our um, our templates. So here I'm gonna describe blocks, and then these guys will extend layout.pug um, and extend that kind of stuff, and and be able to just define the blocks where the content's gonna go. So let's do that. Let's let's make this. Um, Let's make this thing. So head has a title. Let's assume that the title is always going to have one north um, in it. 
but sometimes you know it might have a uh, well let's just let's just make it um, one north for now and then we'll move on to saying hey let's look at the data if there's a value for this data we can say one north pipe developers one north pipe Eric Karen that kind of thing um, but this link tag I can now take I have to move that out of here I'm gonna close all these tabs because it's getting a little overwhelming. Cool. So now, um, underneath this, I can have a block that's gonna be CSS. Um, basically, I can say like this is where I want my CSS to go, in case anyone wants to use this but insert CSS. I'll call it head. They can put whatever they want in there. They just need to know that this is gonna be at the at the bottom of the head of our function. Um, and then here we're just gonna have uh, yeah, content, and then I want to do this. I want to include this this Vue.js um, CDN now across everything. Uh, get started. Their guide is incredible. That makes it really easy to, to get going. So how do we make this ready for you? Are ready for a pug? We uh, we'll say cool. This is where our view script's gonna go. And, yep, and then underneath this, we, we can put our the stuff that's going to be using our view. So our content's going to go here, and then our um, script, our script block's going to go here. Um, so that's it. I was about to close off the body tags, and I remembered I'm, I'm using pug. I don't have to. So here we have this index.pug, which is great. And um, let's just hop over and see if we can we can just start using it. Um, so the way they use it here is they just say extends in the name of the pug file. I hope that it's relative to the root directory because I'm going to say here extends index.pug. Great. And then I'm going to start defining my blocks. So block scripts and then I'll, I'll have uh, everything kind of fall into place. So block content would be this, right? So this is the content that I'm interested in, in doing here. Um, cool. Let's see if that works. I'm really, I'm really curious. Cool. So it's looking for developers landing index.pug. So that's really great. So we know that it's not going to be relative. Um, we're going to have to go up a folder to get that. Wow. Awesome. Um, and let's see if uh, Vue.js is is in our is in our um, template. So you'll see one north is at the top. We've got this Vue.js script and then that's it. There's nothing else. But if I wanted to add a script that pretty much did a uh, you know a simple Vue.js um, I'll put scripts. I like the word scripts. There's a chance I might have multiple. Um, but let's do that. So here I want to say um, <clears throat> Here I want to say let's do um, a new script tag. Um, where we we use view. So um, I don't know how to do that in pug at all. So let's find out how to do that in pug at all. Get started. I think they had a script example pretty pretty quickly. Maybe code is what it was. Sorry, I'm kind of hopping around. Um, script, 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 script. Nope, not there. Case. That's not what we want. We want tags. Nope, we want code. I th would have thought that would have been in code. Anyway, so while I struggle with this, um, I'm basically just going to describe to you what what Vue is. Um, Vue is basically this this JavaScript framework that's going to allow us to um, use our data, um, and kind of pull our data from from the back uh, the back end our server, and then we'll use Vue.js to handle the rendering from here on out. So um, something I haven't done that I probably should have done a long time ago. Um, before we dive into all this script stuff, actually, is um, let's save this. Let's uh, let's make a commit. 
because right now we have a lot of progress that needs that needs to be saved. Um, let's make this let's make this view a little bit more intelligent. Extends index.pug that will be a content block but we describe what, what's gonna go here. Uh, we can we can straight up use Balma here, can't we? So let's um let's do that. Um, do, 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 do. Let's just make a card. Um, cool. So we have a card. The card is gonna be relatively simple. Um, we're just gonna say uh, we'll make a card and we'll have a card image. And that will be a figure um, that is an image, and I guess it has this responsive thing. It is four by three. Neat. Um, and then say image where the source is equal to whatever this is. Great stuff. Cool. And then, um, oops, I'm going to move this off the edge. Alt image, that's kind of boring. We can make our alt text a little bit more intelligent than that. So we can say, um, I hope this works, um, because I don't want to type all on one line like that. Alt equals. Um, We'll have that, and we'll put the developer's name there. Developer name plus image. Cool. So that should say Eric Karen's image, Emma Birdsong's image, Ryan Haskell Glass's image. Um, when we when we have the alt text there. Next step, uh, next to the card image, we'll have the card content, which will be another one of those media things that we were we were doing before. No, nope, not that. I didn't say we do that. Media left is that oh great yeah so we can we can pretty much just copy paste the, the code for that I have no idea why we do that nope um, <laughs> let's just go straight to media content and and kind of render the stuff that we did before so media content uh, we're gonna have a um, H1, that's the most important thing on the page. And we can say uh, that'll be equal to the developer name. Um, we can say H3. Um, which will be the developer's uh, favorite language. Super exciting information, right? So let's go to this and let's see what happens when we go to developers slash Brian. <laughs> that image is huge, just needlessly huge, and that's because that's what I told it to do. Uh, I'm not an intelligent man. I hope my face isn't that going to be that big. Uh, holy moly, that that's insane. Uh, that's actually kind of really cool too, but but I don't want that. Um, let's just uh, let's just use a simple um, let's just use a simple section here, um, and we'll just we'll do this. For the for the data um, that we get, so instead of the title uh, being title, we'll make a developer name, and we'll make it developer uh, favorite language. That'll be a little bit more reasonable of a view. There's probably like some filters I could run to make favorite language always be prefixed with that. That's probably something I can do in my controller um, to kind of make it so that my view doesn't have to keep representing that information like that but um, we can we can worry about that later I think that the view is doing a great job um, spitting out uh, what it needs to um, let's see there we go this is uh, this is great this is pretty free so far um, let's um let's let's just uh, we can leave the home page as it is and let's let's save our progress here so I like to um, I like to um, kind of do get 
git commits um, just to make sure I don't lose any information. So let's take a look at this. Um, all this stuff is stuff that we did, so I, I want to add all of it. I definitely want to add the index.js, the index.pug, right? And if you're not familiar with git, we're basically just we're adding things to be committed. So if I wanted to add everything, I would do git add star. And these are all the files that I want to put in my repo. Git commit minus m. Um, first commit. And so let's let's take a look at what we did. Um, it's actually it's, it's pretty substantial. Um, we've got this developers thing that takes in that data, and it, this is server side rendering. So SEO is totally down to digest this information um, and make sense out of it. Um, and we've got we've got a list of our people. We don't have any pictures yet. We can we can steal those and and add that to the model. And actually, that's kind of an exciting uh, thing that I will do. I think it's like a creepy thing I can do. Um, so let's actually just just be creepy. Um, oh, there's my face. All right. So no, about. Um, if we keep moving at this rate, I think we can just we can just make one more website again. Um, let's see where all technology is. There we go. So that that's a big that's what we do there. We're going to scroll past all that. We are going to copy the image address here and we are going to put that in our data model um, for our developers helper so get all developers it's going to have I want to get rid of this gender thing I think sexism is over we can move on um, great so I will steal that I will find Eric Karen there he is Copy the image address. Boop. Stole his face. And then uh, there's my ugly face. All right. Geek. Sweet dudes. So um, this changed the developer's helper. You can see with this git commit, you'll see that that's a, it's a new uh, uh, modification. So hopefully in my view, um, I'll be able just to start using it. Um, let's let's go to the developers thing and instead of making the source this, let's see how easy it is to use these these templates. I really I'm I'm I think I'm going to be spooked. Holy heck! Okay, congratulations. That was so easy. This is this is web development, guys. This is a joke. Okay. Well. Uh. Wow. Okay, sorry. Um, that was great. I think I think we made some pretty solid progress. I'm um, just going to um, git add the changes we made with a commit message that says add um, developer images. Cool. Oh, we are not pushing. Sorry, that's a force of habit. So that's it. Look at these nerds. We've got we've got some nerds. Uh, say I want to make the text bigger. I can I can play around with that, but that's not really uh, an important change. Here's one. Um, Balmer recommends that if you're doing subtitles and titles, you should separate them by two. So I will gladly do that. So there you go, dude. Um, and then let's take a look at the responsive view. Um, and I think it's going to break because I didn't include the meta tag. But uh, let's let's take a look at, at what we've got going on. Oh my goodness! Every time I try to do Control Shift I, something horrible happens. My battery is dangerously low, um, so we're gonna have to probably cut this short um, for the for the next section. Um, but responsive. This is what it looks like now. You see, this is an iPhone five. This is not very usable. Um, but what we can do is we can. Um, we can add a, a view, a meta view tag. The beauty of that is since we we went ahead and used these templates um, and we're extending, every page is going to get this meta tag. So I'm going to look up how to do that meta viewport tag. I don't know where. I guess here's a good tab. Meta viewport. Cool. First link. That'll probably have it. Yep. Great. Okay. So I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to uh, pugify it, which definitely needs to be a word. Uh, 
this is this is like spooky how uh, friendly this is I'm pretty sure this will do it man let's take a look let's refresh this page fail me yo yo I did something stupid ah and there we go now we're now we're ready look at these nerds you can see that we got some issues here um, we can we can address that layout problem Maybe we want to make the image just smaller on mobile. Uh, maybe we want to make the uh, images show up on the top. I think a good approach for this would be to have some um, these hidden tablet. Um, this will basically um, this will be what happens on the normal display. And this will be what happens on um, a mobile display. So I really don't like this padding. So that's some responsive design for you. Um, here we have each media item probably just have its own padding. And then we'll probably want to move these kinds of changes to um, or want to kind of move these kinds of changes to uh, to a CSS file at some point in our lives but that's okay cool so we've got this so this is our this is our iPhone this is what it would look like on a Nexus that's pretty great um, and then as we as we add data uh, we should be able to see um, that that data just kind of grows. So um, yeah, so if I wanted to add uh, one of the Alex's, let's, let's add Holly. So uh, Alex Holly is that, and then here we'll say Alex Holly. His favorite language is by far Elm. He is a big Elm fan. Um, he is always talking about how Elm is just the coolest and how Ryan is the best coworker he's ever heard of. Um, yep, so let's grab his face as, as is done. There he is. All right, copy image address. And I want to remind you guys, there's nothing creepy about what I'm doing here. Um, in case you're wondering, this is totally normal. Um, this is totally normal. And bam, it's easy. Um, one thing we can do to make this uh, developer landing page really come to life um, before we dive into um, all this complexity, oh, my battery's gonna die, we better do it quick, is we can say, um, let's do an href where I say slash. Um, Wow, okay, so this is what I was about to do. I was about to say we can just go to developer slash, and then I was gonna say the name of the ID. Sorry, I like to do, whatever. I was gonna say the developer's ID, but as you can see, we don't pass that in the model right now. Um, and I think that needs to be associated with each developer. I think that's that's part of the information that um, that's necessary. And so instead of using it as a key here, um, I think I'd rather um, kind of refactor this to uh, return a list of things. Um, um, just a list of things that are basically um, objects of their own. So I'm going to do this, 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 and this. I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to do this. ID is, I am a professional, that was the coolest. Anyway, so we're gonna associate the IDs here, but what that's gonna do is, this is that's gonna break uh, our functions that are that are iterating to these data structures um, in ways that they're familiar with. So the way to get a developer by ID is to take these developers and just kind of run a filter across each of them. This is just gonna iterate through all the developers and um, um, I'm just going to get the, the a list pretty much of 
developers with the ID. All right, that's what this will be. And then here I will say return true. If this if this function returns true, it'll it'll add that to the list, this developers with ID list that we're creating. And if it returns false, it won't. So I'm only interested in developers where their ID is the same. We can use triple equals because we're with it. Um, so I want to filter down all the developers by this uh, criteria where this ID has to match the ID attribute on, on their um, their object. And then I can say var developer um, is going to equal developers with ID at zero. So it'll just grab the first one. If I find two guys by ID with the same ID, I'll just grab the first guy. Um, that shouldn't happen in my database. Um, the back end should, should protect against that. Um, but this is basically what it is. And then the rest of the code is going to be the same thing. So if we um, refresh the page, everything here should be OK. Great. OK. And then Alex, good, because the key is Alex Hall. Oh, not Hall, Hall Yoler. I've never once called him that. Great. OK, cool. So what we did so far um, was uh, we created these templates, uh, we created these views. Um, what I want to do as a final step is now that we have access to this, um, let's just grab that ID. Um, so when we're on the developers page, you can see, um, oops, oops, what's going on here? So this is the section at the top, this is our list, a tag, article. <laughs> okay, looks like this needs to be uh, one level deep. Oh, no, I'm an idiot. I need to nest these. So this needs to go inside the a tag. So when I click on that, it'll take me there. Um, fortunately, I don't have any back button on the page itself. But now we have an interactive list of developers that'll that'll take us, that'll route us to the right page, um, and that's that's pretty great. Um, that's going to work on on mobile. It's going to work on, uh, on on everything. And we did that. We used we used Pug, we used Node Express, and we created a simple MVC project that just generated content. And that's a huge that's a huge step. Um, I think uh, besides refining how we want the views to look. I think the next step would be to actually use this um, this Vue.js you see is printing on the console to uh, add some cooler features to our, our developer's landing page, like filtering and search. Um, and we'll take a look at how, how we want to do that um, shortly. So uh, yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for keeping up with all this nonsense. It is Saturday at 12.05, so the morning is, the morning is gone. Um, yeah, uh, thanks.